Hey guys, uh, I'm making this video on the petition to remove conditional residency. Uh, it is the I-751 um, form, and you have to fill this form out if you've, um, in our case, if you obtain uh, residency through a marriage, um, you need to, uh, you only get a two-year green card. So to remove that conditional status on the two-year green card, you must fill out this form. Uh, everyone uh, that has been through this process uh, should receive this, and you must file this 90 days uh, from the date of expiration on your conditional residence, residence card. So in our case, um, you know, we have to file it between August 15th through November 15th. Um, we, we can't file it any time before that. Otherwise, if you file it too early, you actually get denied. So, you know, my wife immigrated here on November, you know, let's say 15th of 2017. We could only file this now in 2019, 90 days before November 15th. You must wait um, one year and nine months before applying. You can't apply any earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go through this form and things to look out for. And then I'm also going to show you guys about the G1145 or 1145, which is the e-notification form. And I'll tell you guys a little bit about this as well. So flipping back to the I-751, to get this form, you can go to the website, USCIS.gov slash I-751. I'm going to click on the form here. This will open up a PDF. Just pop this open. You can open this in Chrome or you can open this in Adobe uh, Acrobat. Uh, so this top part, and I'm going to use this pen here that I have. This top part up here, you do not, don't fill this out. This is not for you. This is only for the immigration officers or the USCIS office service, you know, processing this form. The area that we start in is here. It says start here. And then it says type in black ink or print, right? Like you must use black ink. Don't use, I'm using red ink. Don't use red ink. They don't accept that. You must have an OCR reader that reads this form and they are looking for you to type this in. Or sorry, they're looking to read this data from the OCR reader. So it must be in black ink. I suggest to type this out. Do not write it. Type it on your computer. All right, so let's get started. So part one, pretty easy. This is information about you, the conditional resident. So be aware that you are the conditional resident. You are also in this form, you are the petitioner as well. So just be aware. There is no, no such thing as the applicant in this form. It is the petitioner. You're petitioning yourself to remove your conditional status. Uh, this part here is obviously information about the person that screen card is expiring. If you use other names, then you need to fill this part out. And then you move on to other information. This is your date of birth, your country of birth, your country of citizenship. In our case, it was India and then India here. This is your alien or green card number. This is going to be on your green card, your permanent resident card, the alien number. So it's security number, you more than likely have this. It's a blue piece of document. You know what it is, nine characters. And then the US CIS account number. This will only be available if you receive a letter or an email from them. This is not going to be on your green card. On the green card, it does say US CIS, and then it has a number. But that's not the account number. Don't get confused. This on the green card is not this. So just be aware of that. Uh, you put your marital status. In most cases, you're going to be still married. If you're not, then you got to select one of these other options. Uh, you know, date of marriage, place of marriage. In place of marriage, uh, we end up writing the town, the state, and the country, right? And so the country. So in our case, it was 
you know, something like Paton and Gujarat and then India, something like that. So we'll keep moving on. You don't fill this part out unless your marriage has ended. And if it did, it ended up via divorce or a date of death, uh, then you, you put that in here. Everyone must fill this part out. This you must fill out. So this is when does a green card expire? This is written on the green card. So get this date from your green card. So keep moving on. So then we have here the in care name. So this is this is essentially who you know who's going to receive mail, who gets the mail, right? That's what this is. Uh, street number, et cetera. This is pretty straightforward to use. If your physical address is different than your mailing address, then you click yes. If it's not, then you click no. If you click no, don't fill this out, right? Like, don't, like, if you fill this, then don't fill this out. Don't put an X through it, just don't fill it out. Um, any of these parts here, so like if you have this, this, or this, at that point, I would say you need to probably stop watching this YouTube video and you need to go get a lawyer because these are more serious issues that you're dealing with that uh, more than likely it's going to cause a, a lot of issues if you try to apply yourself and figure this part out. It's definitely not going to be an easy road for you. Um, this part relates to that, relates to these three questions, especially number 20. I think is, it relates directly to number 20 about being arrested for a crime. So if you have been, uh, you guys need to figure that part out. It's going to be an issue. All right. So a couple of other things here. So I'm just going to put a stamp on this. So if you gain this through a different residence, so if you, in our case, you know, no, to say, why did I do a star? Let's so go back here to fit. So, like, no, have you ever lived at another resident, uh, another address, you know, since you became a resident? In our case, this was yes. So, because it was yes, we need to go to part 11, which is called the additional information. And then we need to, we need to write uh, in the additional information with th three things you need is you need to know the part number, you need to know the item number. And you need to know the page number, which is at the bottom here. Page two. So you're going to need to know page two, part 20, question number, or item number 22. Straightforward. Um, let's keep moving on. So this part's straightforward. You know, this is just your information, your biographic information. So nothing too complex. Keep moving on here. So this is page three that we're on. Page three is asking about like the basis of the petition. So we'll just go through here, right? So this is the joint filing, yeah, this thing. So this is, you know, why are you filing in our case is it because it's spouse. And then if you're not filing because of this reason, you're not filing with your spouse, um, then you need to fill out a waiver. This is related to the question up here, which is asking about, you know, what's your status right now? And because of your what your status is right now, this is, you know, if you're if you're if you got divorced or your spouse is deceased. You need to fill one of these parts out. And then now, moving on to part four. This is about this U.S. citizen, the person that sponsored, you know, who petitioned in the I-130. So who helped you get your residency here? In our case, it was the spouse. My, You know, I am the spouse. My wife was the one that was immigrating from India. Um, the other information, so this is the same thing, but I'm filling it out for myself now. The person that has a U.S. citizenship or the person that was already originally living in the U.S. that applied to bring uh, your spouse over. <clears throat> same thing, physical address. And then if you have children, you'd fill out part five. You could have up to five children, child one, two, three, 
four, five. And then their addresses. Part six, you only have to have this, um, you know, are you requesting, you know, this is all for disability. No, 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 for us, we're not disabled in any manner. So if you are, then you need to fill this out. If it says, if, you, if yes, in any of these, then you need to fill this out. But for us, we're skipping that part. All right, part seven, the petition's statement. So the petitioner in this form is the, is the one that is applying to have their green card status changed. So it is the person who recently came from a foreign country and recently received their conditional green card. So be aware of that. In the petitioner statement, more than likely you're gonna say 1A. You can read everything, you can write everything, it's pretty simple. Uh, but if you didn't, if you use an interpreter or if you have requested services of somebody else to help you with this, then you would click two or 1B, either one. So for us, it was 1A, and then my wife filled her information out, printed the name in here, it says I, you print the name, scroll down, petitioner signature, so you, you uh, see it says continued, so you're still part of that, you know, it's still part of that page, I'm sorry, still part of part seven. She signs, she dates. Now, spouse or individual listed, this is the person, this is me, so I'm gonna hit 1A, I'm gonna fill this part out. I'm gonna I'm gonna print my name right here. I'm gonna scroll back up here. I'm gonna sign date. If you had the interpreter, they would help. You would have to fill their information out here. Have them sign. Have you know? Have them put their name. Have them sign everything. And then if you had somebody help you, like an immigration attorney that prepared this form for you, then you would put the preparer's name. You put their information. Make them sign. And that part is done and it's pretty much over part 11 is if you had more information as i mentioned before we did have more information you remember uh we had two addresses we had two physical addresses so i gotta put the previous physical address here so it's part um page two part one item 22 i'll just go back and look at that now let's just scroll back up to page two so i'm gonna go back up here i'm gonna go to page two it was part one Right. If I keep going, it's still part one. I was on question 22. So I had to hit yes. Have you resided at any address, any other address? So if you answer yes, at item 22, provide all the addresses you've listed and the dates uh, you resided in those spaces. So right here is part 11. So I'm sorry, uh, you go to part 11, and you type this information in. So part one is right here. We click yes, and we put that information there. So, so that's what we did. Um, pretty straightforward and simple. Now, you should be fine if there's some small errors, like you forgot to put the date that you lived here. You know, as long as the address is there, all they want to see is you know, you're being truthful with the information. And that's it. You are done filling this form out. It's not too bad, not too long. Um, click here. And look at the instructions one more time. Um, you can get the instructions always. It's always the bottom one. So this is instructions. There's two things you need to send with this. You need to send the filing fee and the biometric fee. And then you also need to provide um, copies of your, your green card. So I'm gonna scroll down here. It says what additional evidence is required. You need your green card, copies front and back, and then you need the evidence of your relationship. So it tells you what you need. Lease contracts, financial records, bank records, credit cards, loans, titles, bills, anything really. And then, and then anything you may think is relevant, um, you know, information. So anything really works. We took stuff from Instagram and Facebook, like actual screenshots of it i mean i think that's more legitimate than just regular pictures because at that point the public knows that you're in a real relationship and then you need sworn affidavits by at least two people that have known you so a sworn affidavit is one that is notarized uh that essentially talk about your relationship uh within you know a paragraph or two nothing too complex you you send this with 
the filing fee. So you need to write a check or a money order and it must be written to the US Department of Homeland Security. So you, you, you send in two checks, one for the $595 for the form, and then the second one for the biometric service fee of $85. So you send that all into a packet with this petition, with all the evidence stuff related to it. And then one last thing that I find, uh, that I send through is, uh, one second, what did I do? Still recording, yep. All right, just making sure. So the other thing I send is the G1145. All this does is you receive text messages or emails when the USCIS accepts your form and you get updates via email. So it's a super simple form, it's one page, it's like six boxes. First, uh, last full, sorry, petitioner's last name, first name, middle name, email, phone number if you want text messages. You submit this form in front of everything. So this needs to be in front of everything that you have filled out. Um, it just makes it a lot simpler for them to find this form and process it right away. So being sure to send this G1145 form in front of it. Same thing, the website's the same, uscis.gov, G-1145. All right, guys, that's all I have for you. If there's any questions, uh, just leave some comments below. If you guys like this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Share the video if you can, if anybody else needs it. But definitely like, comment, and uh, subscribe to my channel as well. All right, thanks, everyone.